Hi, Chrissy here again for part five of the car buying course as a part of Return and Reunion curriculum. I'm going to try and wrap up a couple of uh, last minute things, but should you have more questions or if you just wanna learn more about the car buying process, remember you can reach out to Fleet and Family in our financial department at um, the best way if you're on a ship I think would be email. Um, FFSC for Fleet and Family Support Center. SD for San Diego, training request at Navy.mil. So FFSC, SD, training request at Navy.mil. So knowing your rights is something that's really important when purchasing a vehicle and for vehicle ownership. Another thing that I would suggest doing is if you have found a vehicle that you like, if you feel like you've got the deal that you want and you just wanna double check, triple check, which it behooves you, it's a great idea to spend one hour of your time bringing in a contract to Fleet and Family. You can also bring them by legal if you want, um, if you think that there's something in there that looks a little fishy, um, it would be a good idea. So ask for that great deal in writing and then bring that to our offices and we will be able to walk you through that process to make sure it is what we all think it is, okay? Um, I, a couple of things that I wanna just show you on here, California does have state lemon laws, so if you feel like you've been sold a vehicle that just doesn't work and it's not functional, um, there are some additional uh, requirements and help that you can get through the state lemon laws. Um, another thing that you should know about the state of California is odometer rolling is illegal and should be reported. Clean Family actually does spend a lot of time uh, documenting and then um, reporting any organization that has been taking advantage of service members. So we need to know that and we have even gotten organizations shut down uh, for claiming that they helped service members when in reality they took advantage of them. It's an unfortunate thing but it does happen. So know about some of these other places that you have for your rights. The last one, the other one is your rights um, with regard to the Service Members Relief Act. Um, so the Service Members Relief Act will cover you for several things, but for vehicles, you mostly want to think if I have to get out of a vehicle lease um, because I have to go on deployment or I just got picked up for an IA or we've had another event happen in our life, you have the right to get out of that lease. This also applies to um, your rental agreements with your home or your apartment, also phone contracts, um, you have some rights under that. And you also have some rights as to what kind of um, interest you're paying down on your debts before getting into um, active duty service. So know about the Service Members Relief Act and what it can do for you. If you have a complaint with a vehicle you have purchased, you're gonna to wanna to first go, this is again, if you bought it in a dealership, okay? If you've bought a private sale of a vehicle, they're gonna say, huh? Well, it's yours now. You'll wanna to go to the dealer first. Um, that does not mean also that you cannot go to the manufacturer of a vehicle if you have an issue, um, but you won't be able to use this dealer specifically. Um, so go to the dealer, and then if you cannot resolve the complaint, go to your manufacturer representative. Then you can go to the Better Business Bureau, which has a lot of other really great information for consumers, so I would suggest going there. Um, to better educate yourself on businesses and financial wellness. Um, and then the other associations, and then you can take it to the Office of Consumer Affairs and the state's attorney general. Basically think about this as the tiered structure within your command. You don't go straight to the CO. When you have a complaint, you wanna make sure you can resolve it at a lower level before taking it up with the big dogs. All right. So in summary, we wanna make sure that we have thought about what kind of vehicle we wanna purchase, what are the requirements of the vehicle, we wanna look at how much we wanna spend monthly on that vehicle, the total cost of the vehicle, um, and then make sure we don't get ripped off with those good negotiating strategies, and then know what to do should we have an issue going down the road. Fleet and Family will be there for you every single step of the way should you feel unsupported. What's great about Fleet and Family is it's not like working with a credit union or a bank or some other financial institution because their main incentive is to help service members. They don't have any other 
They're not trying to help you with a car deal because they also want you to get a savings account and a checking account with them. Um, so they are a truly unique organization in that they are only there to serve you as service members with no underlying um, conditions or incentives. All right? And then just know that Fleet and Family will be here for you should you have any questions or concerns. This is our centralized scheduling number. I know you cannot contact that while you're on ship, but if you have anyone at home who needs additional support, um, we can help with car buying for anyone who is a beneficiary, who is a card, um, who has a base access, okay? And then if you have additional questions, always feel free to reach out to us by phone. It's been a pleasure to talk with all of you. I hope you all get out and get the vehicle that you want. I hope you feel like you get a good deal on it and Fleet and Family will be here for you, okay? So everyone stay safe and uh, we'll be waiting for you when you get back. Bye.